So my S10 needs some attention. It needs it right there. Got a hole in the floorboard, which is an odd thing to have in a desert truck, basically. I mean, the Rockies and all are arid environment. So how would that happen? Loan the truck out for several years and nobody really pays attention to the fact that there was a hole in the rubber mat, the vinyl mat, whatever that's made of. And then all that jute padding, when you get in and out with snowy muddy boots, that jute padding soaks up the water, the water stays against the metal, the metal rusts. It's pretty bad. It's oh, probably at least that big. At least as big as my hand. I'm looking at from underneath. Um, but that's what I intend to repair. If you're looking for how to tear out seats, I can't help you with that. I did that over a decade ago. Put these, what are they called? They're 2000 something. They're not like the year, but it was the, the model number of 2000. But they're a basic bucket seat. I've seen them in just about everything. Um, very good. I love them. They're very good, but they're got brackets that I should put it up to the the uh, stock mounting points, you know, those neighbors that honk their horns. Holy crap, why do they do that every day? Every day. But good seats, I've loved these seats. Um, so I'll be pulling the seats out, pulling the carpet out. I have to pull out all the a lot of the trim down there too. Actually, trim all the way up the sides too. Yeah, so it's going to be a good bit of tear out. Small side note with these, these seats. The slider on this thing has never worked correctly. And it's simply an engagement problem. It wasn't pulling far enough in here to disengage that locking tooth, whatever that is. So I just put a kink in the wire, and boom, now I'm working. As I was talking about the brackets, just simple freaking strap steel bent and put in the right places to catch the two factory studs. However, here, I had to drill holes into it and put my own bolts in. Looks like back then I still believed in uh, overkill is underrated because those are massively big. Same thing on those side, but looks like my brother left some playing cards in here. <laughs> you have a window broken, you always find more glass. So this truck just needs some love and attention. I'm going to get back to it. Another side note, this right here is a clear demonstration of why I like Rod Fosgate. This little amp is from the late 90s. Still going strong. I'm sure the newer ones are much better, all that. Running these Punch P1s that I got probably 10 years ago. You were hoping that I was going to give you a how-to of stripping your interior. Sorry. It's all very basic. You can see some of the clips stuck in here, but that whole back panel comes off. It's stuck on clips like this. And they stick in there all the time. Those little things end up on the back side of these. Should go right there, should stay there. Sometimes they stay on there like that. Pull those out. I haven't pulled the seat belts totally out, mostly because the bottom hookup form is actually quite freaking solidly stuck in there, probably rusted shut. So I'll just leave them hanging outside while I do my work. The carpet that hangs here has got some Christmas tree pins in it that just hold it at the top. Um, there's nothing that holds it at the bottom. This side, the kick panel just comes out. Those are on clips again. Those clips are stuck in there and they'll stay there. I'll put it back in later. That one you have to take out an underpiece. Seven millimeter screws, about four of them. You pull those out, then you can pull that kick panel off. I'm getting pretty close. Um, kind of out of time to do anything more today, so. Okay, this part was exactly as I thought. It's a little, it's not even a ring, a little C-clip type thing. It engages in that slot right there, and then this pops straight off. You pull off this whole bezel here and here, two little oh, wire connections, and there's just four clips. One here, two here, three, four. And it just pops out, slides off. So that was easy. Seat brackets. That one's out. This one wants to fight me. For some reason, that bolt's all buggered up. And sins of my youth, I used some big freaking crap for this. I'll rectify that. I'm going to go to Home Depot, get better bolts. I'm, I've been using too many of my bolts. I'm out. But the other thing I'm going to do is the factory. I actually did them like studs. 
so it's just a nut that comes up so I will take those and actually make them more like studs which means bolt in a, a nut or put a bolt in from the top put a nut tighten it down to the sheet metal and then and it works that way um, you'll see when I do it if I remember to film it but for now I'm, I'm cutting that thing off that's it's the only thing I know how to do right now is cut it off It's not worst case scenario, but man, is it bad. This is definitely not something I can repair with a simple bit of fiberglass. I was hoping for just a hole right in there. But no, the rust is spread back here, spread over here. And it's bad. It's, it's corroded all the metal. The metal's pretty much worthless right there now. If I fiberglassed it, it only freaking keep spreading. So we're in the territory of needing a new floor pan. So this just became more complex of a job than I was hoping for. But, I have the stuff to do it, um, I just need to order up a floor plan. I'm seeing, and I had some dampness back here, and you see the signs of it. But there's the factory sound deadening that goes right here, oddly enough, that's the only place I see that they actually put it. As you can see down here in the cab corner, there was some wetness there too, I'm not sure where that's coming from, but I got penetrations all over in the back that I'll be sealing up. Um, Mainly of the sound deadener, the actual butyl will cover that stuff up, seal it up, and it'll be good to go. But I got rust here and here. This stuff seems to be just surface. So I hit that with my freaking wire brush. Self-etching primer and coat it, it'll be good. But that, yeah, I've got to cut all of that out. So floor pan probably back to this joint. And then up the wall as far as I can get, and up the front. Nice thing is... Fold this out of the way. If there can be anything nice about this at all, I don't see any signs of this portion actually having any rust. So it stopped at this seam. That's why I say nice thing. And I think it's the same story here. It stopped at this seam. So it's just all of this has got to get cut out. Alright, so step one that I've learned. If you go searching for a 94 to 2004 Chevy S10 pickup floor pan, you will not find it unless you're better than I am. What I have learned is the older 80s Chevy S10, I'm trying to remember the years, it's like 92 to 93, same exact floor plan. Systems engineering wise, it totally makes sense that the floor pan, the firewall, inner fenders, the frame, the transmission, the engine, all of that, they did not change between the 80s and the 90s. So it's the same truck except for the outer skin. Just the outer skin got that more rounded 90s appeal to it. Otherwise the rest of it's the same. So if you're looking for big patch panels like this, go look at the 80s S10s and compare. I'm not about to slice my finger again trying to test fit that again, but it does test fit totally close enough that I'll make this work. My big concern about this it's how far this rust has come. Has come. I may have to bend up some of that stuff, may have to play with it, but step one, I'm going to cut this out. And go past the rust, inch or so, see how much I have to deal with. Luckily it goes up the transmission hump enough. It comes on this back here. And now I do want to cut out this body plug here. It's glued in with some sort of, I don't know what kind of seam sealer or whatever it is, and then it was painted over. Here in the other patch panel, it's just straight steel, so that's what I'm going to do. I don't know that I need those plugs. I don't know what they're really for. But before I start just willy-nilly cutting, I am going to climb under, and I'm going to check out what might be in my way under here. I don't think there's much, but again, before I even turn this thing on, I'm looking at what I've got under there. Make sure I'm not hitting anything, because you know, you're awful close to the transmission and any, any control wires and things like that that might be there. Alright, time to get to it. Okay, and crawling around under there, I figured out those little things are your standard GM little clips. I've got somebody else in my arms, so I can't really show you with both hands. But I popped those out. This one's got some rust all around it, so I'm not sure how I'm going to handle that. But also, right under here is the body mount, and I did order a new body mount for it. 
There's another plate of steel. So it's got like three different plates of steel. The sheet metal, another eighth inch plate of steel, and then the body mount that's stamped eighth inch steel. So I gotta be careful cutting all that out. I can kind of see it right there. So it's gonna be a fun one to cut that out. I don't want to damage or destroy that. I want to set this new pan right on top of it and be able to do something. You can kind of see what I was talking about with that other plate that's under there. Getting back in there where I need to get past the rust, I'm going to get my body saw out and use that. And you can see what I'm saying about being careful because you got brake lines and all kinds of electrical lines right here. Granted, with a 2 inch body lift, I'm a lot farther away than a standard S10 would be. So I'm probably okay. I got more margin of error basically. Still, try not to make deep dives with a speed cutter. Now I need to pull out the body saw and do a little bit. You got a steel bent plate there, and then you get the floor pan itself. And the floor pan must be spot welded in place to this top plate here. So I'm gonna figure out how to clean that up, how to get it off, because the rust comes all the way. To So what you saw there, this is crazy. The floor pan itself had totally and completely disintegrated here. So there wasn't much of anything left of it. And I cut away everything I could. I was very careful. I still nicked into, into there. But everything else that's left, I'm hitting up with the rust reformer from Rust-Oleum. All right, I feel like some sort of paleontologist trying to put this back together the way I took it apart. It's destroyed some of the rusty parts where I'm not sure I'm going to be able to use them as a pattern chunk. But back here I can, where it was still solid, where it went way past the rust, trying to get past this plug. I'll be able to use that for a general guide for where I need to cut. And here I cut down there, I'm going to want to go up on this. So I've got that good lap joint going. But up forward, that's going to be... It's going to be trial and error. Okay, I'll be the first to tell you I know enough to be dangerous, but not enough to tell you the full story picture, the whys and the wherefores of why things do what they do. As you can see, I've got some small little variations from what this 82 to 93 pan is versus what my 94 pan is. So I'm going to cut that corner off. I've made some relief cuts. I'm going to widen some of those relief cuts. Oh, back behind the pedal, I'm going to make some more relief cuts. Ended up with a gap over here. I should have been a little bit more patient for when I was cutting, but... I'll fill it in with some scrap. I'll get it all filled in. Alright, near as I can figure, the disconnect is in one little detail. You see here, it fits pretty fine. It's kind of lining up with the stampings. I mean, I can massage that a little bit more. There's a stamping in there it lines up with. But they were intending to go up here with their flange that I cut off. They wanted to tack to here. So they're counting on a lot of this being rotten out. And they're wanting to go up to here. So you're cutting past the original joint and putting it up to there. Which I could do. I could do that, but I'd rather have it sitting on this joint 
you know, laying it down here. Of course, I cut way too much there. But to do that, I got to reshape everything back here. So that's my conundrum right here. Is there's there's the disconnect of why it is not fitting and sitting the way I would like it to. This is quite simply they intended to do this. Which to me leaves all kinds of gap under there for collecting mud and salt and all kinds of other crap that'll just rot everything out. And then you got a huge gap up there. And I don't like either. So I think I'm gonna keep trying to get it to sit there. Thing is, I mean, I'm like an inch back from where it should be. So the question becomes, do I cut this flange off all the way? A couple of relief cups up there, I could get it to fit, but if I cut that flange off all the way, maybe I get it closer to where I want it, because that is my inch that I'm off from where the stamping is here and here. And that is the pushback that I'm getting right there. That is honestly what I'm thinking to try next. Um, so I don't go past that point of return. I might just pie cut all this stuff, bend it up and see how that fits. And again, this is the trick to play with this is cut little, 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 little at a time. And then figure out how your fitment comes so when you've got patches like this to make, they'll be... generally shaped how I want it and prepped to be welded in. Now you watch me actually do a lot of these drill through so I can do some plug welds. So I'm going to do two different types of welds here. Plug welds for the lap joint and then I'll also do some stitching along this stuff. But notice I spent the time to actually remove all the EDPM from anywhere I might be welding as much as I could. Up here it's a little difficult because that's only held on a little bit. The hardship is going to be laying down beads in these relief cuts. Because I have a bad habit of blowing through thin metal, so I'm going to have to really practice what I know about welding here. On the point of EDPM, these parts, these replacement panels, you know, exteriors especially, if you get a, a new fender or something, you'll see a lot of people just stick them on there and think, oh, it's painted black, it'll last. No, it will not. EDPM, electromagnetically, electromagnetically deposited primer material. It's a primer. It's not sealed, it's not weatherproof, it's not nothing. At the very least, do yourself a favor if you're using one of these panels. Put some freaking Rust-Oleum on it at the least. Which one of the things that really pissed me off when I got the new hood and Gypsum Auto Body. -a. Never used them ever again. They didn't put anything on the underside of that hood, they just left it. So I hit it with some, <clears throat> some gray rattle can at the time and that has lasted all these years later. Decade later just about. So you know I'll be doing the same thing here. I'll be hitting all the bare metal points anywhere I've welded with self-etching primer and then I'll cut the, uh, coat the whole thing in some Rust-Oleum. Just whatever I've got on hand back there. Looks like I got some gray, I got some black, I got some rust reformer, truck bed liner. Yeah, I'm going to use all that stuff to coat this. I'll get under the truck and coat the underside because in fitting this, you can see I scraped and scratched and dug into a lot of this. So it's not a very durable coating at all, the EDPM. But, it is a good base for a primer. I'm going to slice my hands open. As evidenced by the fact that all I did was just simple Rust-Oleum on the underside of that hood, and in a high heat environment, it's lasted great for 10 years. So, coat it with something. Next, I put it in, do the final shaping, I break out the welder, and I start zapping things in. And then, then we get...
seven or eight hours after I started, it's in. It's not the prettiest thing ever. I'm not the best sheet metal welder ever. I was using little tiny spot weld, I guess you'd call it, but just little zap, 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 zap. You can see that in the video, but you can't run a bead, or I don't know how to run a bead on sheet metal without blowing through. But you can see I used both rosette style welds, so a the ones back there aren't near enough to sheet metal and I can't get a hammer underneath to bend it there, so it is what it is. Some of them I can get a decent bead on, but it's in. Truck is solid again. All that mess is gone. The next step after this is to seam seal everything that's got a weld on it. So seam sealed from top and bottom both. And then throw some paint on everything, let that cure up a day or two. And then lay down some sound deadening and redo the insulation and the carpeting. But all of that is probably the next video. And this is probably enough to conclude this video. This is how I put in a new pan. And again, like I said, you can't find the 94 to 2004 S10 floor pans. You can find the 82 to 93. And you can make it work. You can see I had to do a lot of dirty cuts and stuff everywhere. And different pie cuts and it still doesn't fully form where you might want it to up there. So it gets real Frankenstein up there. But it's in and it works and it fits and it's pretty much the same pattern as what they had before. And I got some nastiness up there, but seam sealer on both sides. I'll keep the rust from coming back. Undercoat the heck out of the bottom side with a uh, truck bed coating, the rattle can style. But I don't know that I've ever seen anybody actually replace a floor pan on an S10 on YouTube. Mossman 301 does a lot of stuff on his S10s. He's had two of them. He's got a little white one now. He's done the cab corners and sill plates and all that kind of stuff, but I've never seen somebody do this, so... I could be wrong, I just missed it. But here's how it's done. Order yourself up an 82 to 93, tear everything out, stick it in the bed of the truck, and go to town. Expect to do a lot of cutting and fitting and cutting and fitting, cut a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, until you get a good enough fit that you're happy with it that you can weld it in. And if you can weld better than I am, or I can, good for you. Uh, Feel free to DM me in Instagram and let me know when you're available next time I need to actually have some welding on. Otherwise, I'm just a dude in his garage doing the best he can, doing a job that would take thousands of dollars to pay a pro to do, and I'm only spending hundreds. So, yeah, just a dude in his garage trying to keep his stuff running. All right, you come this far, appreciate you watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.